Okay, um, so yes, I'm Helen, I'm from uh, Human Library Morecambe. So, um, so I first got interested in the Human Library, I think I might have read an article in The Guardian or something like that, it was definitely online and I um, felt very passionately about the idea from the off really um, and so I I can only speak to you about my experience of putting a human library event on, okay? So there's somebody uh, who's miles more qualified to be able to give you the history of the human library, and I can give you a little bit of that, but I'm probably going to speak more about, um, about my experience of, of putting the event on. Um, so, I, yeah, usually I don't speak to big groups, so I'm a little bit nervous, um, but like Wim Hof says, on the edge of our limits, we find our greatest growth. So um, I'm hoping that, you know, feel really confident after this. Um, yeah, so I, I first read about it online and I um, instantly fell in love with the ethos and the idea of it. And so uh, I then contacted Human Library um, and it was miles more formal than I thought it was going to be in terms of the application process. So you have to fill in um, an online application process and you have to detail at that point what books you would like to have, so what titles you would like to host, really. Um, and without really knowing um, the sense of it, it's quite a difficult thing to, uh, to come up with sort of 12, 15 books. And so I sort of went away and had a look at what other human library um, events had hosted. And um, I put down some of those, but I also had certain people that had certain books represented. I wanted them to, to be there, so I included those. One of those was um, uh, a member of the travelling community, because Morecambe has a big travelling community, uh, and it's quite divided and sort of sectioned off, really. Um, and so, uh, yeah, so I, I put down my books and I did my application, and then um, I didn't hear anything for a while. Um, but I was really, really passionate about doing it. You know, I was like really, really wanted to do it. And so kept checking my emails and knowing there's nothing back. And, and so I just thought, you know what, I'm just going to hassle this guy because it's just, you know. Um, and so I spoke to HQ uh, in Copenhagen, which is where it was created. And, um, and then they said to me to get in touch with the um, UK coordinator. And so um, I came down to Manchester and had a meeting here. I think that they were having, um, they were doing some sort of training because the human library is used into big corporations and biz big businesses and they go in and they do a human library within that workspace. And um, that's for basically for quality and diversity. So, um, so they do that for some of the for some big, big businesses really. Um, so I came down to Manchester and I was lucky enough to meet uh, Ronnie who created the Human Library in, uh, in 2000 and also Katie who was the Human Library UK coordinator. Um, and that was sort I didn't really get off to a very good start um, if I'm honest. Uh, there, was, there was Ron and then there was um, Louise and then there was Katie and um, and, and I went in to, to meet them and I sort of, they were having this little meeting sort of finishing off and I went over and said, hi, I'm Helen. And uh, I looked to the female in the, in, in the group and I said, and you're Katie. And this other person said, actually, I'm Katie. Um, but, you know, thanks for trying sort of thing. And, and at that I thought, mm, I'm a bit game over here. Um, made a real boo-boo, you know. Um, uh, but actually, it, it was okay. It was all right, and and we we had this informal chat. And um, you asked sort of why you're interested in hosting the human library. Um, in a roundabout way, they are seeing you know getting a sense of how you are as a person, what your values are, what your morals are, you know how open you are, and um, and so and it was also used as a little bit of a training session. Um, because I'll come on to later on, they require you to do some training. And, and so it was used then to sort of give, give me the background of it and to also say what's required. Um, and the first thing that you realise is that actually it's quite um, time heavy in terms of organising a human library. Um, so I, I went away and um, thought I need to give myself enough lead up time and um, and then it was like, right, okay, so I need to find some books. And um, I need to bring this really unique 
you know, concept, you know, that's quite progressive to Morecambe. Um, has anybody been to Morecambe? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, so um, so Morecambe now is on the up. You know, we're we're, get, we're getting an Eden project north, and you know all of that's happening, and it's it's brill. Um, uh, but two years ago, you know, that wasn't on the cards, and so I spoke to a few people, um, third sector organisations and, and whatnot, and sort of said, "Do you believe that it's a little bit too early to to bring it to Morecambe? Is anybody going to come?" Um, and selfishly, I had this sort of nagging doubt, a bit like when you host the party, you sit there and think, oh, my God, is anybody going to turn up, you know? <laughs> and so um, so I wanted to sort of put the feelers out in that regard, really. Um, and, and, and part of that, I went to see the, um, the local organiser of the LGBT um, in Morecambe, and they said, well, you know what? We're just about to have our first Pride, and, you know... There isn't anything to say that we're gonna. It's gonna go wrong. You know, we've, we've everybody's been really accommodating and securing a space geographically and all the rest of it. I think it might be, you know, quite a quite good time to to bring the human library. Um, and pride did happen, and it went off no problem. There was no aggro. It was it, it was brilliant. So um, yeah. So then I sort of <clears throat> contacted human library again and said, okay, so I've now sort of done the formal bit. How do I? actually formally able to put it out on Facebook or wherever and promote it and get books on board. Uh, <clears throat> and they sort of said, OK, well, hold on a minute. There's um, this whole sort of training thing that we need to do. So um, the UK coordinator needs to train you to be able to train your books because um, anybody can sort of um, put on the sort of thing that the human library is, but unless they go and get a license to do the human library, they can't call it human library. Okay, there's, there's sort of like a template, um, you know, a framework that the human library has to work to. Um, so yeah, so I, 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 so I sort of went through that process also. Time's ticking on here, and I'm sort of hoping that it's really going to happen, but. But you know when something's really hard and you're really quite interested in it in the beginning and then it's like, phew, this is a bit like pulling teeth, you know. It was quite hard work. Um, but, but not in a way that where people weren't doing what they should have been doing. It was just, you know, I, I had to be, um, I had to sort of be chasing it up quite a bit. Um, so I said, you know, where do you get your books from? What, what happens now? Uh, and they sort of said, oh, that'll just evolve. That'll just happen. You'll be, you know, you'll be fine. People will show an interest and it'll be fine. And it was a bit like, no, this is Morecambe. It's the first time it's ever happened. People probably aren't going to show an interest, you know. Um, so I did go to the LGBT community and spoke and to see whether anybody wanted to, um, to be a book from there. I went to um, other charities. I went, we have in Morecambe um, a, a Truth Poverty Commission and... Um, they, they run a food bank. We have a very successful food bank in Morecambe. So I went to speak to the person who runs that, whether they would come and speak about poverty. Um, and so as I, as I got to sort of like three or four books and, and, and it sort of gained momentum a bit and I thought, oh, it could possibly work, I then started to actively advertise it um, on local groups uh, and somebody responded, what, you come and speak to people that you don't know, like, you know, triple question mark. Uh, and it was like, yeah, that's the idea, <laughs> you know. Um, and so, yeah, people were sort of saying, it's an oh, it's an interesting idea. And um, don't know whether I would want to be a book, though, or, you know. Um, and, and so my day job is that I'm a child and adolescent therapist and I work with people that have experienced trauma. So, um, so I work with children in post-adoption that have experienced trauma and then I've gone on to do my continued professional development in, in, in totally in trauma and I also see adults um, who have experienced it. And so I hear lots of people's, you know, I hear people's stories a lot and I hear them, you know, at quite an intimate depth really. Um, and so I wasn't afraid of that aspect in terms of, um, you know, uh, approaching a drug and alcohol team or, you know, mental health charities. Um, I, I, was, I was quite OK with doing that. Um, so the process is, is that when you have gone through your 
um, stage where you, they sort of deem for you to be the right person to do it. Um, you get sent, um, you pay a license fee, um, and the license fee is literally so the human library can continue to um, sort of extend their training and be able to um, put all the information that's in an organised kit to be able to send to you so that you totally know what you're doing in terms of the framework. Um, so that every human library has, you know, the same running, the same ethos, um, the books are recruited the same way, the training is the same. And um, because it's such a delicate thing in terms of people are brave enough to come and be a book, you know, you really have to honour that in terms of, you know, treating it right uh, and with the right sort of sensitivity. Um, so, so people were starting to message me to say, oh, I think I might want to be a book. Uh, you know, the, the, my friend from the food bank who created the food bank, she was speaking to other people and people were starting to approach me and say that they wanted to, to be a book. And so in the first um, initial stages, you then have to ha uh, do a telephone sort of conversation with people, see what feel you get for them. And then um, you explain a little bit about the human library. So in my case, um, one of the first people that I spoke to um, was somebody from Blackpool, and he had a really um, interesting story, and he'd experienced quite a lot of prejudice. Um, he, he had stage four cancer, and he decided to change his diet to vegan. Um, he also obviously had, um, you know, the conventional treatment, but believes that the vegan lifestyle worked in terms of his recovery. He also was a parent of a transgender child that went on to win Miss World. It was like, you know, I spoke to this person that had all this going on, you know, and he, and he really wanted to be a book. Um, but it, but he'd also just done a TED talk and he'd also just written a book. And, and so, um, although he was very perfect in, um, his way of being was lovely, you know, um, I think he sort of sort of saw it as a bit of a vehicle in terms of promoting his book and his TED talk or whatever. Um, and, and I really had to make clear from the very beginning that actually it's not about bringing your boxes of books and stacked by the, by your table in the human library, you know, um, and, and, and as a result, he, he then didn't end up to be a title. So that was that. Um, so, so what happens in terms of, um, in, in terms of titles is people can choose, um, you give them an example of titles and they can choose what title they want to be published under. And they can be published under sort of three, two or three titles. Yeah. And, um, and if that title isn't in the, the folder of all the titles that the Human Library has ever published, um, you, you, you then speak to that person and say, well, what would you like your title to be? So um, another person who did end up being a book um, was she'd suffered a bereavement through stillbirth. And she had, and, and at first it was like, wow, have you, have you experienced prejudice? You know, and, and when we were, when we were compiling the judgments um, and the stereotypes to do with her title, um, you know, she explained that some people had spoken to her about um, you didn't look after yourself in pregnancy, you know, and all those sorts of, or there must have been something wrong that she didn't tell us about. And she said, you know, and those things sometimes were said out loud to me, but sometimes they were sort of inferred, you know, on a really, you know, a sort of below the radar thing. And... Um, and so she didn't feel that bereaved did did you know it wasn't the title for her. Um, she wanted she wanted something that that, that said you know that she'd experienced um, stillbirth. And so at that point, because that's not in the folder, um, you then go back to Human Library and you say this person wants this title and they want these judgments and assumptions. Um, you know, uh, of what, how, how she's experienced those. And they then sort of say, okay, right, well, we'll create, we'll create a, um, like a, a book description, the called. I've bought them in my folder. Um, and so you really have to, 
you really want to give people what they want to do. They're really brave enough to come and talk about their story and to talk about how they've experienced prejudice. And it's a really quite a daunting, scary thing to do. And they then come up with, you know, they sort of say, well, I think it could be published under the title of whatever. And you sort of say, well, actually, would that fall under, I don't know, poverty? And they'd sort of go, mm, yeah, but it doesn't really, you know... And so on the one hand, I struggled with, I'm asking this person to come and do this really brave thing, but actually, you know, um, I'm asking you to publish under a certain thing, you know. And so I tried very hard to to accommodate the people, you know, um, that wanted to be published under different titles that, that weren't in the in the folder. Um, and and that worked, that worked, on the day, that worked quite well. Um, so... What was I doing when I was... So I was meeting people. I was meeting people in cafes um, uh, or, you know, um, at the Truth Poverty Commission meetings or whatever. And um, in terms of me wanting to get my, my member of the travelling community, um, I wanted to actually get a lady from the travelling community. And, um, and so through that network, I was put in touch with somebody who liaised with them you know, they wouldn't meet me direct, but they would liaise with this person who would liaise with me. You know, that process was quite long. And then I, um, and then I met with with that the liaison person and with the the member of the travelling community. Um, and so, for me, that was like, oh wow, I was really, I really wanted that. And you know, and she agreed to do it. And um, and so that was that that was quite a big thing for me, really. Um, in, in terms of, um, I would meet people for like two hours, two and a half hours, sometimes three hours and speak to them. The process doesn't take that long for you to speak to people to see whether they're suitable for the human library. But from a selfish point of view, I was meeting people that had really interesting stories <laughs> and I wanted to sit with them for as long as possible and listen to those interesting stories because I knew that on the day when I was hosting the Human Library, I wouldn't have a chance to do that because obviously members of the public were going to get a chance to do that. Um, and so I would then meet with them and then I would say, you need to think about what publish you, what titles you want to publish under. Uh, let me know what your thoughts are. Um, and then we would have to, like I say, we would have to set up and create these um, judgments and these prejudices and these comments that had been said to them that actually in hindsight not at the time but actually afterwards it was like well actually yeah I felt a bit judged there and a bit you know um so so yes yeah, so that was the process in terms of organizing it and like I say it felt like I'd organized the party and I didn't know whether anybody was going to turn up um I, I was pretty chill I was pretty chill towards um towards the run-up until about a week before where three people dropped out. So you have to have sort of 10 or more books to run an event. And I was just sort of scraping through at like 14, 15. So then when three people dropped out in that week, I was like, <laughs> I didn't dare answer the phone or look at me emails. So it's like, oh no, please, you know. Um, so yeah, so, so the actual... Um, the actual process of the human library is, is that you have a desk. Um, sorry, usually they take place in libraries. Okay, they're just the perfect place for them to happen. Or, or if they take place at the universities, um, you know, in a sort of communal meeting space, um, they do do them at festivals, um, you know, in little tents and stuff. Um, but usually they happen. They usually they happen at libraries. So when I organised to do it. The manager of Morecambe Library contacted me and said, I'm really excited about it. Lancaster gets everything because they've got a university. And now that's going to change, you know. And I thought, yes, brilliant. Uh, and so I went to have a look at the, at the library. And in terms of practical arrangements, it was perfect in the fact that it had a very big room that was separate and um, that they used to use for use services where the meetings, the books, the readings could take place. And then they had like a little chill out room where all the books would sit together. And, um, and the reason that Human Library ask you to do that is because they believe that if the books are in the same room as where the public are sort of walking into and they'll say, oh, I want to speak to somebody 
with a disability and they point at the person in the wheelchair, it's like, well, actually, the person with a disability is, you know, they've got a hidden disability, this is such and such. And so what they want is, is that the learning takes place as soon as that person comes out of the room and you, you, you know, you, that they greet that person, really. So it's quite important that the books, they're not like hidden away, but they're, they're chilling out on, you know, and the, the, yeah, so they, they just want the meeting to be like that, ideally. It, it, it does happen with other formats, but ideally that. Um, so on the actual day in the foyer of um, the library, you have um, you have a board that's bigger than this, but I'm not going to bring like a big display board, you know. Um, so you have a board that's bigger than this, but everything's black and white about the human library in terms of the marketing and, and, and the resources. And um, so you have another board and you have another board that says on loan and available. And so when the public come in, they're able to see what's available, what's on loan. And then they look at those titles and they think, oh, I'd like to speak to a child of the care system. And so then you um, you show them the judgments and the and you know and the prejudices to do with the child of the care system. In terms of you're sort of just prompting you're prompting them in terms of you know discussion points or or, or whatever. Um, I'm in charge. I'm then librarian, so um, I'm in charge of those introductions. And I say, you know, this is Adrian, and he's child of the care system and this is you know and then we sit you down at a desk do you want a glass of water or a cup of tea uh in that uh, my lovely husband was <laughs> was the tea and coffee person that day uh, did a fantastic job um so so yeah and then they speak for about 25 minutes um and all the time I, ha I need to be in that room so that I'm able to see that everything's just going as it should be going. And also the timings are right as well. You know, I don't want to leave somebody over there that's, that's, that's had like 35 minutes and they're thinking, when are you coming, Helen, to break off? <laughs> you know, um, so, so yeah, um, so I have to keep on top of the timings and I have to really gently go over and say, OK, so you've probably got five minutes now or, you know, and some people say, oh, no, I really want longer. And they can ask for longer. So they can put their hand up and ask for longer. But it's probably only about a five or ten minute extension, really. Um, because it's actually a really exhausting process for the books. Because they're talking about really, you know, really sensitive things to them. And, and, and although it is very much a two-way thing, um, they do feel that they do a lot of the talking, you know, and it is quite exhausting. And then also what's happening with the books is that I didn't appreciate as much as I probably should have done was that those books, when they're in the chill out room, when they're not on loan, they're all learning from each other all the time. So I was really lucky in the fact that all those people got on really, really well. And so all I ever heard from that room was like really loud laughter and, you know, they were really having a great time. Um, but they said that they learned miles more, well, they met m as much from each other as the process of the human library. And, and, and that was really nice to hear in terms of it was enriching for the books because, you know, they've done quite a brave thing in terms of uh, coming along and sharing. So um, I'm trying to think about what, there's loads of other things. <laughs> There's loads of other things about the human library, and I'm trying to think about um, in terms of the day itself. Um, like I say, I had about twelve or thirteen books. If you've got a, around that around that number, what the what the human library want you to do is have about three librarians. So you've got somebody on timings. You've got somebody that's doing the teas and the coffees and making sure that everybody's okay. And so when I, when I wasn't in that big room. Dan was in that room and he was able to see what was sort of happening, you know, because he was making teas and coffees and stuff. And then I had somebody else who was on the welcome desk who was welcoming the public in, you know. Um, so in terms of success, um, there was probably, well, I know, I know actually that there was, um, there was 28 loans uh, which for a first event in Morecambe was quite good. You know, some people came and went, what, what is it? What is it? <laughs> oh, it looks very interesting, but it's not for me, <laughs> you know, and that's fine. Um, but some people had said, a guy came from Birmingham with his wife 
Yeah, uh, he was wanting to. Yeah, he was wanting to host a human library, and he just put his application in, and he wanted to see how it how it goes. Um, some people came from Blackpool who'd seen it on Facebook like a couple of nights before and said that's what we're doing, and they said it's just been such a fantastic afternoon. We've learned so much. Thank you very much. Um, people came from Preston. Uh, there's a lady from South Ribble who wants me to go down there and, and host a human library there. Um, like I say, we're taking it into schools in, in Morecambe. The format's different when you, when you do it in schools. So um, they can sort of pick their title, the, the people, that, the readers that are coming in, but they, they do it in like groups of two or three. So we're doing, you know, like age 16 to 18, so it's six formers, and they're going in and, and then you sort of say, well, do you want to speak to this person or this person? And they will sit in twos or threes because it's a one-to-one -one thing. It might be just a little bit awkward with that age group, you know. They, and the conversation doesn't dry up if there's three of them, you know. So, um, so yeah. Um, in terms of, I was saying before to Alex, in terms of where human libraries tend to happen, um, there's loads down south, and then it sort of gets as far as Chester, and it seems to stop. Um, and then the next one is Edinburgh, and they now have um, a, a book depot, sort of temporary type offices, I think, going on there. Um, through the through um, providing um, diversity training for Heineken, so Heineken have then said, okay, if you come in and do all this diversity training, we're going to set you up you know, in terms of uh, being able to have a book depot and sort of administration offices or whatever there. Um, so, so when I spoke to Ronnie on that day, uh, there was a mention that, oh, that would be good if it would go, grow north, you know, and it would fill that gap, that sort of thing. Um, and, and, and I am prepared to, to do that. Um, because when you've got books on your bookshelf, what you then approach them to do is to you sort of say, OK, so you've done Human Library Morecambe, but your, you know, your, your title's really interesting. It would be great if you could come up to Carlisle with me. You know, Human Library will pay you travelling expenses if you'll come and, and, and speak up in Carlisle or, or whatever. And so what happens is then, what happens down south, because there's more of them, is that they sort of swap over books and people are willing to do that, you know. Um, I haven't got that luxury yet because I'm up there on my own in Morecambe. Um, so yes, so and some of some of the books that came to human that did Human Library Morecambe have said that they will go on the bookshelf and they will do that. And some of them have said, no, it's not for me. I'll only do Morecambe. You know, that's fine. Um, so uh, in terms of practical problems. Um, I would, you know, let's say somebody was published under three titles and they were published under Child of the Care System. This is true, actually. One of the books was Child of the Care System. He was a chaplain and he was also um, ex-military. And, and so when he gets loaned out, I then have to clear all those onto the, onto the loan thing. And, if, and unless you're on it, because you're greeting as well and you're doing all these timing things, you know, somebody will come in and go, oh, I'd love to speak to a person in the child, you know, child of the care system. And you sort of say, oh, sorry, he's already out on loan. You know, he's actually chaplain as well. <laughs> um, and so you've got to sort of keep on top of that in a practical aspect so that you can manage people's expectations when they come through the door, really. Um, so, yeah, the feedback, you, you, you also get an evaluation kit. So... They really want you to um, evaluate it from the from the reader's point of view. So everybody that came in, I sort of said to them, if you don't mind before you leave today, I'd just like you to be able to fill in just a quick questionnaire, you know, and they were like, yeah, that's fine. Um, so the readers fill in a questionnaire and also um, the books do. And, um, and also I do as well. So um, the books are sort of, um, they're critiquing how well I have facilitated the human library and then I suppose what I am doing is I'm sort of giving feedback on how well human library UK organisation have been looking after me you know so that it, it has a process and that everybody's has a chance to sort of reflect on their practice really um, and the feedback that I got 
from the readers was um, should be more of this and um, this is so needed and um, so there was university lecturers that came there was um, there was uh, a government official you know local government officials there was um, a whole range of people um, that, that, that came social workers teachers head of pastorals at school you know that sort of thing and um, I'm not fibbing when I say that when I look to all the evaluations, nobody had anything negative to say about it at all, um, which was just great. It was brilliant. Um, so many people said they learned so much. Um, and so the books, like I say, they also said that they believe that a lot of the learning took place within that small chill out room where they all learned from each other. And there were really diverse book titles, you know, there were some people in there that, that you know, that was, um, uh, they, their story was something like, you know, sexual abuse, and uh, they came from a very religious family. Um, and then there was somebody in there who was really religious, who was Christian, that was their book title, they were coming to talk on it, you know. Um, and... And so it was this, this, this tricky balance, you know, but it it went well, it was good. And they learned loads um, from each other. So, um, and that for me was one of the biggest positives of the day. Um, I, I, is, it, is it a stressful thing to do? <laughs> Probably because of my nerves, it is a little bit stressful, I'll be honest. Um, yeah, I thought that... I thought I was just going to sort of get some books together and it's just going to be dead chill and everybody's going to learn so much and be dead open and, oh, yeah, this is going to be great. And actually, it's, um, it was a longer process than that and it was more uh, time intensive than, than that, actually. Uh, but like I say, the time that it did take, I learned loads. So um, my plan is, is that we're taking it into schools and also um, that Morecambe, Human Library Morecambe will have two a year, one in March and one in October. And um, hopefully we can start and sort of take it north, you know, to fill that, to fill that big gap. Um, so that's it really. I'm sure that when I sit down, I'll think, mm, I didn't talk about that. I didn't think about that, you know. Um, but, but yeah, that's my experience of hosting the Human Library. And what I was going to say before Craig said, there'll be a chance for questions later. I was going to get on the stage and say, I want you to ask your questions all the way through because that would have been great for my nerves. <laughs> but actually, once you said that, I thought, well, that's not an option. <laughs> Just going to have to talk at them for ages. So, yeah, so that's it. So that's how, that was how the Human Library went for me. So, yeah. <laughs> Is there any questions? Yeah. Um, do you find like when somebody comes in to speak to somebody else, do they ever feel angry about they have to speak to somebody? Sorry, I missed the last bit then, sorry. So kind of like so find somebody comes in to speak to somebody and you find angry that you can see a representation of themselves rather than you know just release the Well they it, it's it's, it's very much a safe framework in terms of um, what that person is coming, what their aim is in terms of coming to the human library. Um, and so part of the training is, is that, you know, and the books also get trained that if they feel uncomfortable or anybody's confrontational or whatever, you know, they put their hand up and I would go over. But in the whole of the history of the human library, believe it or not, um, you know, they said they haven't really had any ma anything major in, in that regard. Um, it's... Towards the end of the afternoon, somebody came and they um, they wanted to speak to a Christian. And they spoke to a Christian and then they sort of said, no, you won't do. I want to speak to a different Christian. <laughs> <laughs> um, they didn't sort of say you won't do, but that was the central message, I think. Um, and, and, and so that person's come with some objective, some aim, some some wanting to find some answers about something. Um, which actually, after he spoke to the second person, w w seemed happy and fine, and he said he'd learnt loads, and, and, and that was all right. Um, so, yeah, it could have probably been done a little bit more sensitively than that, but, um, yeah, it, 
but no, I mean, people didn't seem didn't people didn't seem angry. The people that came along sort of knew what they knew because I'd, I had heavily uh, advertised it. I'd he heavily promoted it. And not just is a picture of the human library of people talking. You know, there was big descriptions about what we were trying to do with the human library and what you were going to gain from it. So the people that came along sort of knew the deal anyway. Um, like I say, the people that that weren't interested in it were quite vocal on ter in terms of local groups. You know, like their comments and stuff. And you know, somebody said, "Are we going to have an animal library?" And you know, just like, "Oh, come on!" <laughs> and you know, and so anything that seems a little bit sort of um, I don't know whether it's like it feels uncomfortable to them or whatever, they'll take the Mickey out of it, won't they? So I just ignored that. Um, yeah. But on the whole, it had a very good vibe to it, and the whole feel of it had um, a, a really good vibe. And the reason that I didn't do PowerPoint or anything like that was because um, I said to Craig, it, it, it's, very, it's, it's very structured, it's got a framework to it, but the vibe of it is really, really welcoming. And in anything that you attend like that in terms of shared experience... So all those books that were there were there to share their experience. You get the same sort of vibe uh, in like AA meetings and things like that, that shared. And, and I don't mean that it's about therapy and stuff like that. I don't mean that, but it's about like a shared experience. And, and, and so the people that came in, I'm sure that they, they um, experienced that warmth and also those books experienced that warmth because the feedback that I got was, wow, you've put a great group of people together, you know, I felt really welcomed and, you know, but I didn't put those people together. The the ethos of the human library put those people together, you know, when I went out and explained what, what it was and, and they were interested in it, it just attracted those people, you know, that were willing to share. So, yeah. Yeah. Is that it? Uh, no, oh, no, I've got a okay. Um, first one, just the kind of logistics of, of how it plays out. So when you say that somebody booked out, yeah, are they so they're booked out for the duration of the maybe thirty minutes? Yeah, about about twenty five minutes. So so then it's the kind of a waiting period, is it? For, so you can if you if you've got an, an interest in one of the things, mm. you can kind of wait. Well, the hum yeah, yeah, you can wait. Yeah. You can wait. The human library encourage you to say. Well, you'd like to speak to that person, but that person's not available at the moment. However, you know, you might want to speak to this person. Just look at these prejudices and judgments about this person. You know, maybe just give that a try while you wait or whatever. And then they encourage you to do that because there's one, because of the timing issue, but two, because that person's come with a very set, I want to speak to that person. It's like, well, be a bit, they encourage you to be a bit more open than that in some, you know, in terms of, you know, being a bit broad, broader minded in terms of what you want to learn about, really. Yeah. So, so you, you can speak to various books then? Could you? Could you yeah, there all, you could be there all afternoon. Yeah. So mine was from, was mine 12 till 4? I think mine was 12, yeah, 12 till 4. So, um, yeah, somebody came and spoke to three books. I mean, the person that spoke to most of the, a lot of the books was the guy from Birmingham because he made the trip worthwhile, you know. Yeah. Um, but um, yes, you, you, the idea is that you sort of come and um, you're open to what the librarian might suggest, and then you know you think about what else you might like to do in terms of speaking to somebody else on the board. And yeah, yeah. Right, so, so the other question, because obviously it's sort of the people are the first of books, but does the human library kind of produce? If not books themselves, kind of, you know, sort of personal narratives of, of people. Uh, uh, you know, is there information available online? Yeah, so I asked about that. So I sort of said, is there like, um, is there like a summary or synopsis of that, that person or whatever? And they and they said, no, we don't do that. What we do is somebody comes in, they see a title, they have a look at the prejudice and the judgments, and then they sit down and have a discussion. Um, and... And somebody said to me, actually, what, what should happen is that the title should be published, so you should be able to say, come along to the Human Library on Saturday afternoon where you can speak to child of the care system, somebody, you know, vegan lifestyle, victim of bullying. And, uh, but then 
that's not how the human library works. They don't want to, that to happen. They don't want to publish those titles beforehand. So no, they just want you to come with an open mind and see what's see what's available. They also don't. Um, I think one of the universities up near us has said that they want to do a human library, but with a focus on mental illness. Well, that's not human library because it's not diverse enough. You know what you're doing is you're narrowing the focus there. And they sort of said, well, no, actually that wouldn't be that wouldn't be what human libraries about so so just to follow up i mean thank you very much for sharing what is a fascinating project i have a couple of questions uh, you, you, you talked about assumptions and prejudices mm. and i wonder where those are where those are collected from do people analyze the assumptions and prejudices before going to see the speaker it, so is the idea that the human library is breaking down stereotypes and prejudices yes is that it's is that what it's that's its aim doing? that's its aim yes so when i spoke to some books there that you know some people expressed an interest where they said i've got a great story to tell and it was and, it, and it's sort of like that's good but is it a story that that um you know that sort of talks about your experience in terms of prejudices and stereotypes and assumptions that people have made about you. Because um, it can't just be sort of a good story just for sort of a, a good story, if you will. It's got to, you know, it's got to meet that criteria in terms of prejudices and, um, and, and yeah, and stereotypes. And so it's in the fold, they're in the folder. So those, they have sort of evolved those from the books that have, take, that, that have taken part in the beginning and they've said, you know, well, I've had this said to me or somebody's assumed this about me or, and they've evolved and been created those book titles. So, um, I mean, you can, I think it's, just, yeah, you can have a closer look, but like, you know, so such as like ADHD, bouncing off the wall, all boys have ADHD, impulsive, too much sugar, down to bad parenting, only boys get it. ADHD isn't a real medical disorder. It's just laziness and lack of focus. You grow out of it, you know. So they produce they produce those for every book title that's in there. It's on their shelf, really. Yeah. So every title has that. Um, and 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 I showed those to my titles and said, "Do you agree with those?" You know, and they'd say, "Yeah, they're fair enough for the people that didn't produce their own." Yeah. So. Um, it, it, that's just, that's to give you the human library a little bit more. Yeah, there's something for you to sort of look at and consider before you go to speak to the to the book. Really, yeah. So, yeah. So that's that. Uh, it's it's really fascinating, and uh, it's 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 my main source of learning is other people as well. We've all been fascinated by strangers and being taken into their world. Um, I'd like to ask two questions. One, how has the way you see the world been changed by your experience of the human life? And the other question is, what are your thoughts on what's behind prejudice? Um, so has my, um, it has, it has been changed. It has been, uh, um, more so because of, since taking on the human library, the things that then I've gone and researched and being part of the human library, the things that are then emailed to you or, you know, or put to you and you read about that and you think, oh, okay, that's interesting, you know. So in that way, I've gained miles more knowledge um, and, and, and perceptions have changed. Um, and um, in terms of uh, prejudice, it's somebody who already has a preconceived idea without... Um, knowing the full context of things, isn't it? So uh, I think it is. Um, and I think that they are very, I think they um, they transferred, and I think they transferred quite a bit from your family unit sometimes. Uh, I think there's a lot of sort of beliefs handed down unconsciously that you don't realise until you're put in a situation where you think, oh, right, you know, and I, I, think, I think that happens a lot. And... Um, 
And I think they're in, they're, 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 they're lazy and the, the prejudices are lazy in terms of it's the quickest, dirtiest route to being certain of something. And, um, and you know, and when we're certain of something, we all like certainty, don't we? You know, we really like, we do though, it makes us feel safe, we like certainty. And, um, and when we don't feel certain of something and something questions it, it's like, ooh, that feels a bit not very nice, a bit wobbly or whatever. And so people stick with them, even though sometimes they've got lots and lots of contradictory evidence, they still stick with them because it's this feeling of being quite certain. I think maybe that's what prejudices are about. And I think, I think ultimately what the human library is about, and I don't know whether Katie and other people would agree, but um, we all have an innate uh, drive to connect, you know, um, in terms of attachment, in terms of my job and, and, and what I do for a living, you know, um, attuned attachment. And um, I think that that's really what the human library um, provides is, is um, a chance to connect um, and, and, yeah, be attached really. Um, and along that, within that process to, to learn something. So, um, yeah, I feel really warmly about the human library. <laughs> yeah, so. I'm really curious about whether we're losing the, the spaces to meet each other, to meet people outside of our mm. Mm. to connect mm. and to have those serendipitous conversations. Uh, I, mean, I, I remember a lot more pubs would be a place where people would tell stories mm. play music uh, but it was impromptu and you you uh, just it's taken on magical history yes yeah yeah and it's, it's harder it's harder I might just be getting older um, I, I found that it was harder to find places and, and I felt that I, I really needed it. And so the other thing that I do is I, I, um, I run a page called What's Happening Brother Portraits from Morecambe Bay. And so I stand on the prom and I speak to people and I say, are you willing to sit down with me for two, two and a half hours, three hours and tell me what your story is? And then they tell me that story and I go away and I write that story up. And then I go back to them and I meet them and say, is this what you're trying to communicate? And they say, yes, that's, I am, or no, I'm not, or I'd like to take that bit out or whatever. And then I ask them if we can go on the prom and I take a photo, because it's very Morecambe focused. So I take a picture on the prom and it's like a Polaroid picture, you know, like Seaside, Holiday Snap, Polaroid picture, and it has their story underneath. And then it's put onto the Facebook page. And um, that's also um, been very positive. Uh, lots of people leave lots of lovely comments for the people that have told their stories and it gets shared a lot. So, um, so I sort of went out and found my own place really to, to listen to people's stories. Um, and that was one of the ways that I did it. It's called, it's called What's Happening Brother, Portraits from Morecambe Bay. And the reason why it's called What's Happening Brother is, is that's a long story, but Marvin Gaye um, uh, wrote, wrote What's Happening Brother in the 70s. It's about social injustice and change and the need to connect and all those other things. And um, I'm a big fan of Marvin Gaye, and so I just decided to call it that because that's what that song is about. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think it's a cool idea. This is it's a very interesting sort of idea you're talking to people all over the world. Maybe, but where, where do you draw the line in terms of obviously prejudice is very, further to the from prejudice is a very subjective mm. uh, idea in of itself. Mm. You know, people have prejudices for all different reasons. Mm. How does the human library decide whose prejudices are or prejudices are going to be the books and, and things like that? Where do you sort of come up with those sort of ideologies and which ones to focus on? Um, it, well, in, ter uh, in terms of how I did it is that I did follow a lot of what the other human libraries have done, um, but, but really sort of the only criteria for it was, you know, have you at some point 
Um, uh, you know, maybe are you a minority in society? That's one of them. You know, have you experienced um, where somebody's made some sort of assumptions and judgments? Have you been treated, you know, uh, not as equally as other people? Um, and is that because you're in a certain group of people? You know, um, how they came to have those um, titles in the beginning, um, I haven't spoken to Ronnie or Katie about that. I sort of, and it's, it's a good point, I've just sort of taken it on that actually <laughs> those, are, those are the groups of people that people have prejudices and assumptions about. Um, and, and uh, yeah, I've just sort of taken it as read that, that it's that. I mean... Um, like I say, some people did. Some people did speak to me and say, "Oh well, I've got a great story." But actually, when you when you looked at that, um, it, it, it was a it was a great story that was. Um, although there was interaction with other people, it was mainly sort of about them, and they didn't. It wasn't about what they'd experienced in terms of you know um, getting rough treatment, bad treatment off somebody, or or like I say, or anybody making a judgment or assumption about them. Um, so, um, you know, some, somebody came forward and said single mum, um, and, 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 and so I went back and had a look and actually, I didn't think single mum would be on there, you know, um, but actually there is single mum on there and, and, and she, she'd suffered quite a lot of prejudice and assumptions going, going, going on, particularly within the school environment and, you know, was, school playground and, and whatever and you know I was a bit like mm, is that one right okay but like I say you know my sort of um framework was that I went back and I checked whether it was there and it was and that was that so um but you, you make a good point yeah about actually who does decide and what who those people are that's true yeah I could feed it back if you want right. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah okay say again wasn't there. What would I have done if it wasn't there? Um, I would have gone back and um, I would have gone back and spoken to somebody human library related, and I would have probably have put forward a case as to why it should be included. If I felt strongly after speaking to her and she felt strong, still strongly about the human library and what it was about, mm -hmm. that yeah, we would have probably in, included it. I mean, it's an extensive list that they've got going on, you know, it's, 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 quite, it's quite a big list, yeah. Um, so, yeah, so they've, they've, they've had those in different human libraries all over the world. It's in 85 countries, I don't know whether I said that, but it is, so, yeah. <laughs> is it what, sorry? About twenty, about twenty-five minutes, really, and then they can have a five-minute extension. I was a little bit, I was quite lenient in um, on on this one in terms of, you know, if somebody really looked like they were very sort of in it, and um, I sort of thought, oh well, I'll just make a cup of tea and I'll come back to them in a bit. You know, I didn't sort of go right twenty-five minutes. That's it. You know, stop. <laughs> stop. Um, yeah. So, but yeah, it's about twenty-five, and it's and. and the, you know, in terms of looking after your books, just quickly, I'll say that, you know, you can't, I can't say, you know, PTSD or any of them. I can't say, OK, you're getting loaned out. Right, you're getting loaned out again and, and you're getting loaned out again. They can't possibly do that three times in a row. So, you know, I say to them, OK, you may get loaned out now. There's somebody waiting for you. After that, you're able to sit out for 35 minutes, 40 minutes and have a cup of tea. And then you can come back, you know, because it's a very, very exhausting process. It really is. Yeah, so. Uh, this is just kind of a final question for me then. So you've mentioned that there's a humongous gap between... Mm. North South Dubai. Mm. Um, so, you know, people kind of present here, and, and you know, and I'm sure people have listened to the report because you've got human library more, uh, is, is the opportunity for them to get in touch with you to explore the option of maybe being a book, a future event? Is it kind of geographically or? Yeah, in terms of being a book, yeah, and, and it's, or in terms of, you know, you, you wanted to do one in your area and you wanted to organise in, in, in your area, you would, you'd, you'd need to do the process of the online thing and, you know, um, and when it came to it, the training, um, because of the nature of the work that I do, the training, 
um, was actually, instead of the coordinator coming all the way up from down south and doing the training, I sort of had that on the telephone with him or FaceTime and, and whatever. And then I organised it with my own books instead of the UK coordinator coming and doing that. Um, but yes, there's an opportunity for books. There's an opportunity for you to organise a human library. Um, you know, probably miles more efficient, efficiently than I did. You know, what I should have done was say, here's a public meeting. You know, here's what the human library is about. If you're interested in being a book, we're recruiting this Saturday, come along. You know, that would have been easier to have done it all in sort of one afternoon or two afternoons or something. But I, I didn't. I did... I did the two or three hours in Costa Coffee or whatever it was, you know. So, and I, and and actually, I, I gained more out of that. So, and I'm sure they did as well. So, yeah. Okay. Brilliant. Thanks. Okay. Well, thank you.